friends, it's Sam, and we have only three days to make over a very cluttered, very weirdly shaped closet in my home office. In this video, we'll declutter, we'll organize, and we'll try to fall oh God, I almost tripped the whole thing of paint. in love with this space yet again, one DIY project at a time. This is my hell. This is my hell. Friends, welcome back to my home office, where in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to organize and customize a very awkwardly shaped closet. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, none of the closets in this house are normal, so get ready for a bunch of weirdly laid out closet makeovers on the channel. Now, I literally only have three days to get this project done because I am going on a big trip, so I'm gonna get started by taking the closet doors off, showing you exactly what kind of mess is hiding behind them, being a little embarrassed at how cluttered and disorganized this closet is and then getting over it pretty quickly and getting to work. So let's get started. This project is sponsored by my friends at Cricut. Welcome to my messy home office closet friends. Where do I even begin in here? I think we'll just work our way this way. Like many things in this house, we've been here for two years now and a lot of spaces I haven't touched yet have just been collecting a lot of stuff that doesn't belong there. I haven't seen this in like two years. This is kind of the plight of living somewhere that you are also renovating where you just keep moving things to different closets and then eventually you have to tackle the closet that everything was moved to. All right, closet cleared out, which means that my guest room is very packed with stuff. Let's demo these shelves. Ready to demo, bud? Spoiler alert, demoing was the hardest part of this project. Okay, that was strange. Oh, almost tripped. Oh, I hate flathead screws and everything in here is a flathead screw. Everything, everything in here is a flathead screw. Oh, a little homemade key holder. It's actually kind of cute. This looks like a little owl or a cat. I'm not sure what animal that is. Of that demo folia because now I have to remove 27 flathead screws. This is my hell. This is my hell. This is literally my hell. Every single one of these screws has been painted over. It's like caked in there. So besides the fact that I already hate flathead screws, ugh, not budging. So and they're all act in studs, so I can't just like rip them out of the drywall. I just wanna get this closet done in three days. I just wanna get it done. So while I demo this closet, I think it's a good time to remind everyone about the online course that I created with four of my favorite dudes in this DIY space, and we call it the Creator Course. I always get asked questions about how to start a channel or work with sponsors or make money creating content. In fact, these are questions that me and my friends get asked all the time. So to help tackle those questions and to help other people grow their brands on social media, we created the Creator Course. The Creator Course is tailored towards anyone who's looking to grow their content creation business or online brand. It has four plus hours of instruction that will help anyone leverage their YouTube growth, increase their revenue, work with sponsors, and more. If you're interested in signing up for the course, you can do so by clicking on the link in the video description below. But do not wait. Enrollment ends on Sunday, October 29th. We can not wait to see you there. But for now, let's get back to business. It's like the homeowners knew, the homeowners knew. They're like, one day DIYer is gonna come in and wanna do this closet over. Let's give her a challenge. <sighs> this is a good thing I have to pass. Yes. Whew, we did it. I'm literally sweating. I'm literally sweating. That was like the most I've worked out all week. Right, friends, we are back in the closet. Wait, we are, oh God, I almost tripped in the whole thing of paint. Did you see that? I totally just caught that on camera. I need to take those things off the floor. I keep tripping. Anyway, I sanded all the patches early this morning, but now we're gonna give this thing a nice coat of paint. I'm just gonna paint it the same color as the rest of the room because I have leftover paint and I don't feel like buying any more paint. So let's do this. Ugh, the amount of excited I was to paint this green closet. It is literally the last spot in this house that needs to be painted. And while that dried, I moved on to starting the build portion. And you may be surprised at what I used to do that for this closet. Okay, so you know your girl typically likes to build things custom. However, I don't have time for that. I literally only have three days for this project. I am putting together some Ikea cabinets. We got one in the closet hanging out there while the walls dry. I have one more to do. 
And then we're gonna cut some butcher block tops custom to fit in the space as well. Arrow is doing a great job helping. Arrow, you're doing great, bud. I guess this is an accidental Ikea hack. I didn't mean for it to be an Ikea hack, but here we are. I'm really excited to get this done. Also, these are really cool cabinets and they happen to be on some weird closeout sales. So like, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, so let's finish building these cabinets and start organizing this closet, friends. Let's do it. I don't think I've ever actually enjoyed putting Ikea furniture together. I swear that it's so much easier to just build furniture from scratch. Oh, look who finally decided to show up. Like I mentioned, it was not my intention to do an Ikea hack for this project, but using pre-made cabinets is a really easy and quick way to customize a space, especially when you can add a couple of custom touches like cutting a countertop to size, which we'll do in a little bit. But anyway, I found these on like some weird closeout sale at Ikea. They are metal, they are awesome. They work perfectly for the space. So I decided to put them together and then install them in the closet. I'm stuck. <laughs> the shelves in and then we'll get it in the closet. So obviously this would not be a DIY Huntress project without some sort of woodworking or custom something, and that's gonna come into play in just a second. Love it. Let's cut some butcher block. Whew. Now, because those cabinets are not a perfect fit, I did end up cutting some butcher block for the top as well as for a small shelf. And yes, I'm cutting it in the back of my truck because this stuff was heavy. In fact, my dad luckily had to pick up a package from my house this same day and he helped me carry the butcher block up the flight of stairs because that was a workout. Even though I used the laminate butcher block, it still was kind of expensive. So I decided to use every single piece I could and made a small shelf off the side of the cabinets for some extra storage in this closet. And this is kind of where that custom part comes into play. Well, I was gonna round out my day by trying to get the trim up and turns out I didn't charge my batteries. Great job, Sam. So I'm gonna charge the batteries overnight and then I'm gonna get started early in the morning getting the trim up. And then once that's done, we're ready to organize, which I'm like the most excited about organizing because I don't have a system in place right now and I have some ideas, but looking forward to it, friends. Tomorrow we finish this closet. See you then, bye. New day, new battery. Let's get started, friends. Whew. Ready to get started? In my humble opinion, one way to make a space really look custom and polished is to do some trim work. So I did decide to add trim to the inside of this closet so that when the doors are open, it looks nice and neat. This might be a little extra for the inside of a closet, but it just felt right in my soul. Once that trim was up though, I then added custom organizational touches to the space. And then it was time for what I really feel like is the most important part of any office makeover organization. It's time for organizing. All right, friends. Now that the construction is done in this closet, it is time for like my favorite part ever, which is getting organized. I'm legitimately so excited to be partnering up with Cricut to organize this closet. If I'm being real with you, my hope next year is to get some help. And so not only do I need to organize for me, I need to organize for them as well. So they are not as overwhelmed as I am when they help me out in my home office. This is my first time using my Cricut to do a cutting and a drawing project all in one. So we're going to be figuring this out together. I have faith that we can do this, but let's try it. Let's get started. So for this part of my home office organization journey, I'm using my Cricut Joy Extra, which is a compact, smart cutting machine that can not only just cut, but it also writes and draws things too. I mean, from stickers to labels to t-shirt decals and more. And for this project, I'm using it to make custom labels for pretty much everything I need to organize in my office space. So to get started, I accessed my account in the Cricut design space. And since I've never done a project that requires me to both draw and cut in the same project, I did decide to rely on the Cricut design community for some help. The Cricut design community has literally thousands of designs that you can choose from to customize your own projects. It's honestly so rad. I found a really cute spice label template that I could customize for my own project and it was game on. So once I had my design uploaded, I customized it with my own labels for my office space, which was super easy to do right in the app. I was also able to move them around so I could save as much paper as possible when printing. So while the design portion was really easy because I used a template, at this point I started to panic a little bit that I wasn't sure I was gonna know how to do this two-part cutting and drawing thing, but the app totally walked me through it and it was so easy to do. So first up, I had to install a fine point pen and my sticker paper into the machine and then it started to draw all of my custom labels. 
And once it was done doing all of the heavy lifting on the drawing of the labels, it then instructed me to swap out that pen for a cutting tool and then it was able to cut out all of the labels into custom stickers for my office. I've mostly used Cricut machines in the past to make stencils for painting projects and I've never actually used them to make custom labels or stickers in this way because I've always been so intimidated by the process. But honestly, the Cricut Joy Extra made this so easy. I can honestly see myself becoming a little bit obsessive about organizing my office now that I know how simple this process is. But speaking of organizing, adding these custom labels to the boxes and files in my closet is the last step in this project. And I'm so excited to show you this transformation. It seriously has done a full like 360 in this closet. I think my favorite part about this project, besides the fact that it took like a long weekend to do, which you know I love weekend projects, is that it feels like I turned a closet into another room to use in this office, if that makes any sense. Part of me doesn't even want to put the closet doors back up because it feels so big and open and like I have extra workspace in this room and literally all it took was a couple of Ikea cabinets and some organization. It feels so nice to finally have like an HQ for DIY Huntress. I'm so stoked about how this entire room has turned out. If you missed the other videos in my office series, definitely check them out. I've linked them below this video. And if you're feeling frisky, make sure to subscribe and like this video as well. I will be back on the channel super soon with another project. But until then, friends, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for making things with me and happy DIYing.